if you're able to do the diet, most of the times we're able to do the surgery with three little holes. That's a picture from the OR. And you're gonna have one scar in the belly button, you can't see it, and two little ones on the sides. That's very good cosmetic result. <clears throat> Sometimes the surgeries are done with a robot. I am a proctor uh, in robotic surgery, meaning I am a teacher, I teach other people how to use this. I have more than 800 cases, which is the highest uh, here in the South Texas. And this is just a picture of how the robotic surgery is done. I usually, especially for people who need reoperations. And here is a slide that shows how the sleeve hysterectomy and the gastric bypass are done. The sleeve hysterectomy has become the most popular operation done in the United States. So you are asleep in the OR, you're under general anesthesia, and uh, we're gonna pass a tube, a plastic tube inside your stomach. You're not gonna feel it, okay? And we're basically gonna use a special device to cut your stomach, and this part is going to be permanently removed. This stomach can come through one of the small incisions. You can see the operation in one of my videos. I posted many of these uh, uh, surgeries. And after that is removed, the plastic tube is taken out. Okay. Why is this surgery, why does this cause weight loss? There's two mechanisms. One obviously is mechanical because now the stomach is very thin, is smaller, and it can receive less food. It's gonna be mechanical restriction. But the most interesting part of this operation is that this part of the stomach is called the fundus. This is the reservoir of the stomach. When you eat a lot, this area distends, and that's where the food stays. So, this area, when it stretches, it sends chemical signals to your brain. The hormones are called ghrelin and leptin, and those hormones decrease or control your appetite. It's a message telling your brain, I'm full, I don't wanna eat anymore. So what happens is that when you have surgery, those hormone levels change. And you're gonna be hungry, but as soon as you eat a little bit, you're gonna feel full. You're gonna feel like you ate a lot. That's the trick about weight loss surgery. Okay, not only is it gonna control your appetite and your satiety, it's also gonna change your metabolism. What do I mean with that? You're gonna start consuming more energy. You're gonna burn more calories. It's like when you go home and you turn the thermostat, you consume more energy in order to increase or decrease the temperature. It's the same thing here. So you automatically are gonna burn more because that's the beauty of these operations. The next operation that we do uh, is the gastric bypass. The gastric bypass has been around for a long time, like more than 50 years. It's also done with little holes under general anesthesia. This operation takes about 45 minutes, okay? The gastric bypass takes about an hour and 50 minutes. What is, what is this about? So it's the same thing. We work on the stomach. The liver has been moved away and we're gonna create a small stomach out of the big one, okay? In this case, nothing is gonna be removed. Here, the stomach is removed, so this is, this is irreversible. This has already been gone. Here, we don't remove anything. After we do that, if you get tired, you can stop. After we do that, uh, we cut the intestine, and this part of the intestine is gonna come up and get connected to the new stomach, as shown here. So when you eat, the food is gonna go straight from this new small stomach, which is about the size of a, small, of a large egg, and go straight into the bowel, okay? It's gonna bypass the stomach and this portion of your bowel. That's why it's called the gastric bypass. Now, your stomach, nothing's gonna happen to it. It's not gonna fall, it's not gonna die. It's still gonna make acid. So all this gastric juice is gonna travel this way. And remember this part that I transected? So this part is gonna connect it with the part that I brought up here. So that when you eat, the food comes down to this point, the gastric juice comes this way, and this is where they meet, and this is where digestion starts, okay? Now, <clears throat> doctor, which operation is better, the sleeve or the bypass? Well, it depends, you know? If your goal is to get rid of diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, which is a metabolic problem, a metabolic syndrome, the gastric bypass is the most powerful uh, surgery that can help you with those, those problems. It's the best metabolic surgery. Okay, if, if I have 100 patients and they get a gastric bypass, about 80 patients are gonna be able to have normal glucose levels without any medication. We don't wanna call it cure, we usually call, call it remission, okay? Now, the, the sleeve, the success rate for the sleeve is about 55, 60%. Still very good, it's better than not doing the operation, but this is more 
powerful, okay? Now, we know that the people who don't respond, like for example, I have uh, to, to, to the surgery, what do I mean with that? Well, sometimes I have patients who have the surgery and they were on 200 years of insulin, taking three different medications, they have surgery, they lose weight, and they're still taking one or two medications or maybe a little bit of insulin, but they have improved, okay? What, so that's not a failure, you have improved. But you usually see that that happens in people who have been diabetics for a long time. They have, they've had diabetes for 15, 20 years. Or their diabetes is very, very um, aggressive, it's severe. What does that mean? That means that instead of waiting for you to be a diabetic for a long time, for it to become so bad that you're using so much insulin, you're gonna have better results if, you're di you, if you operate when diabetes is at an earlier stage. So the recommendation, if you have diabetes and it's not well controlled, don't wait till you use three medications, a lot of insulin. No, you have to have it sooner. The sooner you get the operation, the higher chance that your diabetes is gonna go in remission, meaning you're not gonna take any medication. Same thing goes with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Okay, so this is wonderful for people with diabetes. This is also an excellent operation, and I prefer the bypass instead of the sleeve for patients who suffer from a lot of heartburn. What is heartburn? Some people feel burning sensation in this area that goes up to their chest, and sometimes some fluid, liquid goes up to their mouth and they get this sour taste. And they're taking Pepsi, Omeprazole, Nexium, Tums, uh, all those med antacid medications. That's reflux, okay? So if you have reflux, why is the bypass so effective? Bypass is gonna get rid of it. You're not gonna take any more medications for reflux. Why is that? Because when you have reflux, the acid that is produced in this lower part of the stomach is going up into your esophagus and that's why you feel all that burning sensation. It's not normal. You shouldn't be feeling like that. But that's called gastroesophageal reflux disease. So when we cut the stomach and now the stomach is separated into pieces, the acid cannot go back up, cannot go back up anymore and the reflux goes away. So the bypass is an excellent operation for people who have diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, and cholesterol. And it's also an excellent operation for people who have reflux disease, heartburn, and stuff like that, okay? Now, let's say you have a problem with weight, you're severely overweight, and you, have, you don't have any heartburn, any, any diabetes. Your main goal is weight loss. The sleeve hysterectomy is the operation for you, okay? Why? Well, the problem is that this is, both are very safe, okay? And if we do a gastric sleeve, you're gonna lose a lot of weight, but there's a 5% chance, one in 20 chance, that if you didn't feel any heartburn, you will develop heartburn, and you will have to take medications to control that heartburn. So there's a 5% chance of developing reflux disease when you have sleep, when you have sleep. So if, you're, if you have heartburn, and the heartburn is severe, we don't wanna go into a sleeve right away. What I usually tell patients, if you don't wanna get a bypass, which is gonna fix it, and you just want to sleeve, let's do an upper endoscopy. We pass a camera, and we're gonna look inside and see how things look, because some people who have reflux, from the acid going up into the esophagus, the esophagus can get damaged. You can see ulcers, wounds, bleeding, inflammation. That's called esophagitis. So if you have harbor, and your esophagus is clean, and you don't want the bypass, I'll do the, the sleeve for you. But if you have, reflux disease, and I go and take a look in your, inside of your esophagus, and your esophagus shows us vaginitis, those wounds, I won't do it, because you can have more reflux after the sleeve, and after 10, 20 years, this inflammation in the esophagus, those wounds can become precancerous or even cancer. That's not a good idea, okay? Now, um, if you suffer from lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, any condition that requires for you to take anti-inflammatory medications, then the sleeve is a better idea than a gastric bypass. When is the sleeve better? I sometimes see patients who are really heavy. They have a body mass index of 60 or 70. They are 400, 450 pounds, 500 pounds. For those individuals, the sleeve hysterectomy is a safer operation than a gastric bypass, okay? So heavier patients also. Now, what is the difference between the sleeve and the bypass in terms of life after you have the surgery? 
Okay, so first I'm gonna explain what is the same. If you have a sleeve or a bypass, you're gonna need to take vitamins on a daily basis for the rest of your life, okay? Why? Because you're gonna eat different, you're gonna absorb less, and you can end up having vitamin deficiency. So we compensate that by you taking vitamins. And that's already been established. It's a protocol where you're gonna take certain vitamins. And that's why we also check vitamins on a daily basis. That's number one. In terms of pain and recovery, pain is really minimal. Most patients are, go home the next day after the surgery. Sometimes they stay, stay the second night. And depending on the patient and what kind of work you do, you may need to take one or two weeks off before you go back to work. With both surgeries, the main complaint in the beginning is weakness because the first two weeks after surgery, you're only taking liquids, you're only sipping liquids little by little. So the first two weeks, there's no gas in the tank, you feel weak. Now after we make sure that you're tolerant liquids and you're hydrated, after two weeks, you start on a puree diet. It's like baby foods. And you're gonna get stronger. And that's when people can go back to work and, and they feel much better, okay? Then slowly after these operations, after the two weeks that you're on puree diet, we advance you to a soft, solid diet. What else changes? After surgery, most people that have these operations have a hard time eating some foods like red meat. Any meat that is really chewy or thick, is go you're gonna have a hard time eating that. Most people feel like it gets stuck or they get pain. And sometimes that may cause nausea, you may wanna vomit. So you need to avoid those. Now most people after six months, nine months, a year, are able to eat fish, chicken without any problems. If with red meats, they really have to take, be careful. They can eat a small piece, cut it really small, and chew really well, okay? Now, if you're a big meat eater, and you like your steak and your fajitas, and you don't wanna uh, leave that or put that away, then these operations are really not for you. The same thing can happen with breads, um, with tortillas. When you eat those things and you chew, it forms like a lump, and when that goes down, you can get stuck, you can get stuck here. Then you feel this pain, this discomfort, and that's uh, really, you know, not a, not a good.